Hello and welcome to the latest tentacle tip from Octopus Do. I'm Christian Ross. Today's topic is going to be measuring jump rings and wire using a caliber. This can come in really handy because you need to know what size jump rings you're using for your chain mill to make sure that the weave will work before you get started. Um, to order rings, things like that. Also, if you just happen to have some wire or some jump rings that you don't know what size they are and you need to put them up, it's often good to figure out how these things are measured. Now you can measure your wire or your jump rings with just a regular ruler or a tape measure, but honestly, it's a lot easier to have the right tools and I'm going to recommend an actual gauge or caliber. Now, this particular one is a digital gauge that I picked up at Harbor Freight and it's really handy. And I like the fact that it's digital because I don't have to sit there and guess at where the lines are going. It's like, is that a five or a six or between the five and six? I don't know. So, <laughs> This is pretty handy because it just has the readout for it. So what I'm going to do is show you how to turn this gauge on, use it and get the measurements that you're going to need. We're going to primarily be talking about round wire because well, round wire is round. And so you don't have to worry about which side you're measuring. Just make sure it's the outside. So I have some wire here that I picked up at the store and it's aluminum wire and the packaging on that told me that it was 12 gauge. So we'll check that out. So I have my caliper here and I make sure that it's all the way pushed in. I turn it on, it's the off on button there and I see what the gate, what it's set on. Right now it's set on millimeters. I can change it to inches if I like just by hitting that button. And then if it were not already zero, then I can push this button to zero it out. For example, this wasn't all the way pushed in and I turned it on. So now it's saying zero, but my gauge is open. So when I shut it, we're at a negative number. So you need to make sure it's all the way closed and you zero it out. So here is the wire that I want to measure. So I open up the caliper and right here between these jaws, I line that up and push it closed. And I get a 1.9 millimeter. It's kind of going back and forth between an eight and a nine. And then I can go to a guide and look up what 1.9 or 1.8 translates to as far as a gauge. And I will put a link to a couple of different online resources where you can find the gauge to millimeter size conversion. That's going to be very handy. Let's see what we get here with, I have this wire that says it's the 24 gauge pair of wire. So I'll come in here and open up my caliper and close down on this wire and see what millimeter size I get. And what that says is 0 0.4 millimeters. Now, when we're dealing with really small wires like this, I like using the millimeter size. Um, a lot of times with chainmail rings, I'll switch back and forth because I started out uh, thinking of chainmail rings on the inside diameter as inches like one eighth and things like that. But um, it's always good to be able to switch back and forth. When we're talking about chainmail rings to get the gauge, you pretty much do the exact same thing, except you're measuring the wire of the ring. So I, here I have quite a large jump ring. So I'm going to come here to get the gauge, pull that up. And that is the same size as the wire I was looking at which is the 1.8, which leads me to believe that that is probably a 12 gauge aluminum as well. Open that up and I'm looking at this yellow one here. 
Same thing, 1.9, very, very close. What about this twisted ring little guy here? Check him out. That would be a 0.9 millimeter. And then I have a smooth one, 0.9 as well. So those are the same size. When talking about gauge with half round wire or square wire, it's a little bit different. With square wire, to get the gauge or to get the millimeter size, you're going to measure from flat side to flat side, not from the points. So here's one, and that is 0.9 millimeters as well. And finally, when you're talking about half, half round wire, where it is flat on one side and domed on the other, here's the flat. So that should be measured from side to side across the, like you're not going to measure the half of a circle, you're going to measure across. So that is, that is a 1.9. And that's basically how you take the measurement to convert to get your gauge. The other important measurement I talked about in the last tentacle tip was on a jump ring, the inside diameter. And I'll show you how to get that. So you have your jump ring there and I can take my gauge and I can try to line this up and estimate what that inside diameter is. However, this tool has a great set of jaws on the other side that you see how they move when you slide your caliper. Those are for measuring the inside of something. So it could be the inside of a pipe, it could be the inside of a jump ring. So I've got my jump ring here and I slide this on to the end and hold it. And then I will slide my gauge until it won't go any further. So the inside diameter of this jump ring is 11.6. That's often expressed as ID. I know it is a 12 gauge, but that 12 gauge is measured here as a 1.8 millimeter. So we have the two measurements we need now to determine the aspect ratio. Here's the formula. The aspect ratio is equal to the inside diameter divided by the gauge. So let's do a little math here and say that the aspect ratio is equal to 11 six millimeters divided by 1.8. Yeah, I'm going to pull the calculator out for this one. We get quite a large aspect ratio. That is going to be 6.4 repeating. <laughs> Now, when I say that's a large aspect ratio, that means that there is a lot of space to work with. So pretty much any chainmail weave will work with this ring size. I'll show you a quick example here. It's a leftover demo I had from a half Persian three in one. And you see there is a lot of space between the rings. There's a lot of movement and it's really kind of floppy. If this were a tighter aspect ratio, then the rings would be closer together. The weave would be more dense. I'll show another example of this. Let's compare these two Byzantine. 
Now the spacing on these actually looks pretty similar even though the rings are different sizes. So let's see how close they are. All right, so on this one, the gauge millimeter size, let's measure that. All right, we have the 0.9 millimeters again. And on this one, 1.3. All right, so now let's get the inner diameter. All right, so I'm measuring the one ring here that is 3.2 millimeters on the inside we've got a 5.3 on the inside there So in all actuality, look at that. The first one, it, the aspect ratio is 3.55 and the second one is 4.08. So these were actually very close in their dynamic and how the weave works together. Even though they're different ring sizes, the aspect ratio was very similar. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how aspect ratio will affect your weave sizes. I'll leave some great links in the description below to some charts for you that can tell you what are some good aspect ratios to try for different weaves. It's a great resource to have. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was a helpful tip and I'll see you next time.